Welcome to the lecture for Math 1325, Calculus for Business and Social Sciences, on Section 10.1, Relative Maxima and Minima for Curve Sketching. So we've been looking at derivatives all through Chapter 9, and what have we learned that they do? We have found out so far that derivatives can be multiple things. That is a basic concept, a derivative is a measure of instantaneous change at a specific value. We also know that the derivative is the slope of a tangent line to a given function's graph. If we're looking for that slope at any point, the derivative will be a formula. If we're looking for the derivative at a specific x value, for example, or a specific point, that will be a numerical value. Derivatives also give us marginal functions such as cost. The derivative of the cost function is the marginal cost. And similarly with revenue or profit functions for marginal revenue or marginal profit. So what? Why do I care? Why would a business care about instantaneous change? Why might someone who operates a surgical unit the hospital care about instantaneous change. So let's look at that. In most jobs, no matter what type, we tend to be very interested in a couple of things more than others. One of them is just how things are changing. Are things getting better or are they getting worse? And also, how can I optimize things? It really doesn't matter what type of job you do. For example, if you run a business, certainly want to know how your sales are going. Are sales changing for the better? Or are they increasing or are they decreasing? Uh, also, if you own a business, you I want to optimize things. You want to optimize uh, both your cost, revenue, and profit. Uh, you optimize. Optimizing things means you can uh, maximize them. For example, if you have a business, we might want to maximize our sales while minimizing our costs. Both of those are optimization functions, uh, maximizing and minimizing. Derivatives can help us do both, uh, or it can at least help us figure out where things are happening. And they work in a kind of fairly uh, easy and intuitive way. So let's look at that. Optimization, what is it? Generally, optimization tends to mean that we're looking for the highs or lows of something. Uh, but again, the maximum. Uh, profit or the minimum cost. I mentioned the surgical unit before. You might look for uh, minimizing the length of stay in a hospital after surgery. Um, you might look at maximizing kind of the recovery rates, whatever that might mean, as far as um, percent of motion, uh, range of motion, or something like that. If you think of a mountain range, it's not a tough question to point out the highs, which are the mountain peaks, uh, with an arrow designated in yellow, or the lows, which would be the valley floors, uh, with the arrow pointing in blue. Functions are sort of like mountain ranges in that many have peaks and valleys. Right? So here we can see a continuous graph, and uh, it's also denoted by this bar graph as well, and we can see that the that the yellow arrow points toward one peak, and the blue arrow points toward one valley or minimum value. Let's look at some of the vocabulary and concepts that we have here. Notice that um, the y value is getting bigger when the function is increasing as we go up the function from left to right. As we, can, as we read the function from left to right, and if the function is going up, we say this function is increasing. Pictorially, as you just saw, there we go. the arrow is going uphill. This is an increasing function. The graph goes up from left to right. Notice the slope is positive. Well, we can say that the derivative is positive since the derivative is the slope at a point along here. In a similar fashion, we can see that a, a function is decreasing or going down. If it goes downhill, uh, the y value is getting smaller. So when we go from the peak of the first bar graph 
to the valley or the top of the second bar graph, we can see that we're going down. Again, this is very intuitive when we're looking at graphs. And we also can see, like, if we were thinking this bar graph or function graph was, was our profit function, we can see that the second bar is, is definitely lower than the first bar. So our profits are good to begin with, and they go down, and they go back up, then they go down, etc. So this is an example. If this was our profit or even our revenue or cost function, this is where a derivative might really help us say what's going on here because we have a lot of changes up and down. And so I notice again the slope on the downward uh, for a decreasing function is negative. So if we take the derivative and it's positive, we know our y value or whatever the function is, it's the cost function, the profit function, or the revenue function, it's all getting bigger because y is getting bigger, the function is increasing. If we take a derivative and the derivative value is negative, we know at that point that that functional value or the y value is getting less. Relative maximum, this is where the slope goes from a positive slope to a negative slope. Positive, negative. Notice the slope is zero or the derivative is zero at the actual maximum, which is the peak. Because if we're going from a positive number to a negative number, we actually have to hit zero or hit a value that's undefined. Where the slope goes from negative to positive, we have a relative minimum. Here on the left in the blue, we have a negative slope, the yellow is a positive. Um, and again, at the minimum value, we have a slope of zero or it's undefined. Well, typically when you're looking at a graph that's like the yellow down here in the bottom left, that's a smooth curve, then this, this function is continuous over all values of x. However, if a, if a function has a, um, has a point to it or a sharp corner, then there's a value here often that is undefined because notice what happens here is we move directly from negative values to positive values, meaning we never actually hit zero. So at the point here, it's actually undefined. We'll look at an example later. So even if we don't have a graph, because of what we just learned about derivatives, we can find uh, optimus, system optimus, or functional optimus, optimal values uh, using derivatives. Uh, both finding out uh, the values and signs of derivatives before, after, and at optimus. Now optimus are uh, those points, x and y points of maximums or minimums. Okay? We find those by finding critical values or values where when we plug in x, uh, the slope goes to uh, zero. Okay? So here we have a, a function that's asking us to find the relative maximum or minimum. So follow along with this one. We have another example right after that you can hit pause for and try it on your own. The first thing I want to do is find the derivative. Very simple derivative, again, power rule plus the sum of difference rule. So the derivative of f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. By now, this should be a very simple process, and we should be able to move from f of x to f prime x very simply. Next, we're going to try to find where the optimas occur. This is where f prime x, or the derivative of f of x equals 0, or it doesn't exist. Okay? These are also called critical values. Um, so what we do is we set the derivative equal to zero. Since we have a quadratic equation here, we factor it or we use the quadratic formula. Here we factored it. And then we set each factor equal to zero. x minus three equals zero gives us x equals three. Or x plus one equals zero gives us x equals negative one. Next we're going to find the optimal values, specifically the y values. Notice the x values are where a max or minimum occurs, where it occurs. These are the x values. The y values tell us the actual optimum values, the actual max or minimum values. So we plug these back into the original equation. Now be very mindful of this. This is a mistake that a lot of students will make. They will plug the optima, uh, they will plug the values of x, the critical values, x equals 3, into the derivative. But remember, we're thinking about the original graph. That's what we want to find the maximums and minimums of. This just allowed us to find the x values where they occur because of what we know about slope 
uh, positive and negative, etc. And so we plug the x equals 3 back into the original equation and we get negative 7. Or we plug the x equals negative 1 back into the original equation and we get 11 thirds. So we know that we have two points, 3, negative 7, and negative 1, comma, 11 thirds, that are optimum values. But we don't necessarily know whether they're maximums or minimums. Remember, a maximum occurs when we go uphill and then downhill, like a mountain. So the slope is positive then negative. So if we look at values before and after 3, before and after negative 1, we can figure out if the slopes are positive, negative, which is a maximum, or if it goes negative, positive, it goes downhill and then back uphill, then that is a minimum value. I'm going to answer the other one wrong. If we go uphill, positive, and then back downhill, notice the point at the top is a maximum. If we go downhill and then back uphill, or negative and positive in that point is a minimum. And this is, um, notice here, the best thing to do here, is, in my mind, is to put your derivative equation into your calculator under the function button, y equals. Then look at the table of values, instead of above the graph button on your calculator, you push the button that says blue table, that's the second function. If you look at that, it's really easy to kind of see if the values before and after, uh, for example, in this case, at x equals 3, we want to see what's happening um, before and after. So we can see at f of 2, it's negative, at f of 4, uh, at prime 4, it's positive. So the slope goes from negative back to positive, so it's going downhill, then back up, so we have a minimum. At x equals negative 1, we look at values before, so for example, at negative 3, look at values after, so it's positive, then negative, positive, then negative, we're going uphill, then downhill, so we have a maximum. So this is your turn to try to solve on your own. So hit pause and see if you can go through those four steps. Set the, find the derivative, set the derivative equal to zero to find the critical values of x. So the values of x that make the function, the derivative, go to zero. And we know at those points that you have a positive a maximum or minimum. Once you find that, plug in those values of x that you find back into the original equation to find the y value. Once you do that and find those points, x and y values for each point, now figure out what's happening before and after. Is this slope positive, negative? or negative positive, so you can tell what's happening at each of those optimal points. All right, so here we have our derivative. Again, a pretty simple derivative to take. We set it equal to zero, and we get three values, x equals zero, x equals three, or x equals negative two. When we find the optimum values by simply plugging these in, again, remember we plug them into the original equation, which starts out one fourth x to the fourth. And we get these three values, 8, negative 31 fourths, and 8 thirds. Then we plug our derivative equation into our calculator. We go to the table function, and we look at values before and after negative 2, before and after 0. Notice I'm doing before and after the x values, and before and after 3. And what I find is that before and after negative 2, I go from negative to positive. So again, I have downhill then uphill, so I'm in a valley or a minimum. At zero, I go positive to negative, so I'm going uphill and then down, so I'm at the mountaintop. And then finally, at x equals three, I go negative then positive, so I have another minimum. So in this problem, I have two um, relative minimums, and I have one relative maximum. And there's the graph that you can see of the problem. I should say of the function. All right, let's try another one. Again, I highly recommend you hit pause here and try this problem on your own. And this one has a little bit of a, of a surprise. So if you haven't hit pause yet, do it now before I can go any further. So first take the derivative, set the derivative equal to zero. Uh-oh, we have a problem here. This is a more difficult factoring problem. 
we can factor by grouping. You might need to look that up to see how to do that. Another way I can do that is I can put this calculation, y equals this, into my calculator and go to the table function. Remember, where y equals 0, we're looking for those x values. So I can plug this into the calculator, y equals this, x cubed minus 2x squared, etc. Go to the table function and look down the list of y values and see if I can find where y is 0, and then I'll have my x values. If I do that, I get the neg x equals negative 2 or x equals 2. Since I've already got that in my... Be careful. I was just about to say, since I already have that in my calculator, I can find the y values. But remember, what we have in our calculator is the derivative. What we need is the original equation. So be careful with this. This is a common mistake. And I almost made it here as well. So go back and put your original equation into your calculator, 1 fourth x to the fourth, etc. Go to the table function and find the values of y from f of negative 2, then for when x equals 2. And we get these two values. Now remember, we need to figure out if they're maximums or minimums, so we're going to look at values before and after negative 2. And we're going to look at before and after f of 2. So notice the first one, at x equals negative 2, we go from negative to positive, or downhill then uphill, so we have a minimum. And at x equals 2, before and after, we go from positive to positive. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. This is actually a possibility where we go, we don't actually change directions, but we, uh, we stay positive on both of these. So notice what's happening is this is going up, it's equaling zero in the middle, and then it's going up again. What's happening here is what we call a horizontal point of inflection. If, this, if the polarity of the slope doesn't change, if it goes from positive to positive, it really stays positive, or it's at negative and stays negative after the zero, the more we have is a horizontal point of inflection. If you look at this graph, the point of inflection is right here, at the, again, with the x value of x equals 2. And if you, again, if we use the mountaintop example, this would kind of be a cliff or a ledge as we're climbing the mountain. So notice we climb the mountain, we have a little ledge, ah, uh, we can do a break, and then we can climb further up. All right, one more problem. Let's find the relative maximum and minimum of this problem. Now you can try this on your own, or you can just follow along, because there's a special case here as well. So we first find the derivative, and notice what happens is we end up with a rational expression with um, a radical or a cube root in the denominator. Normally we would set this equal to zero, right, to find our critical values. But in a fraction or a rational expression, it's only going to equal zero if the numerator equals zero. And since we have a constant in the numerator, we cannot turn that 2 into a 0. So there are no values that are going to make this equation go to 0. However, remember, with fractions, the rule is we cannot have 0 in the denominator. And if we do, then the, then the equation is undefined. So we can find a place where the equation does not exist by setting the x plus 2 inside the radical equal to 0. Because if we take the cube root of 0, we get 0, and 0 times 3 will still be 0. So we'll have 2 over 0, which is undefined. Setting x plus 2, or the part that's inside the house, if you will, equal to 0, we get x equals negative 2. Alright? If we plug this into the original equation, we actually get the y value equals 0. Again, we find values before and after negative 2 to see if it's positive or negative, what if the slope is, or what the derivative is, and we get negative to positive, so again, we're going downhill and then back up, and so negative to zero is a minimum. And notice what we have here, we have that sharp corner, or point, not a smooth curve, and what did we say before? These are values where the function does not exist, and that's why we have that value. Well, that's the